Okay, would anyone like to hear a story? Yeah. You sure? You're positive? Okay, I'll tell you a story. Now, this story, when it comes to me, uh, from a woman named Elizabeth Brewer from Plantis Harbor West uh, down in uh, the Saint Germain. Uh, but it's a very, very old story. Um, so, anyway, once upon a time, uh, not my time or your time, but times long ago, there was a man and a woman, and they got married, and they were married for a long, long time, and they never had any children. And the husband, uh, he was really nasty to her. And one day the woman was out in the front doorstep of her house, and she was just crying her eyes out. And a little old man, a tiny little old man, was walking down the road. And he said to her, he said, this is, he said, uh, what are you crying for? She said, me and my husband, she said, we're married a long time. And we got no youngster, she said. And, and he's real nasty to me. And uh, the old man said, he said, well, boy, he said, that's not your fault. That's not right. He said, well, I know. She said, it's not right. She said, but he's nasty to me anyway. All right, said the old man. So I tell you what I'm going to do. He said, now, tomorrow morning, he said, when you wake up, he said, you see that tree? It's over there in your yard. When you wake up, he said, there'll be three berries on that tree. He said, one of them will be as sweet as sugar. The other one will be as sweet as molasses. And the third one will be as bitter as vinegar. He said, you eat the first two, he said, but don't eat the third one. And sure enough, the next day she got up and she looked at the tree and there were three berries on the tree. Well, she ate the first one. Oh, it was as sweet as sugar. She had the second one, it was as sweet as molasses. Then she looked at the third one for a while, and she figured she'd eat that one too. And she did. And it was as bitter as vinegar. And what do you know? Nine months later, she gave birth to three little girls. Oh, triplets. Three lovely little girls. And the first two out, oh, they were as pretty as the sun ever shined on. But the third baby was big ugly and hairy. And they called her Peg Bearskin, because she had skin like a bear. Anyway, the three girls grew up together, and they went off to school eventually. And I got to tell you the truth. Peg, she, she never had any friends at school. She was always off to herself. But as you know, that's often the way it is in school. But when the girls got to be um, teenagers, the, the two older girls, they decided they were going to head off and seek their fortune. But they didn't want Peg coming with them. So they said to the mother, said, now we're going off tomorrow morning. They said, without Peg, don't you tell her. And I said, all right. She said, I won't tell her. So next morning, early in the morning, the two girls got up. They went on down the road. So 10 o'clock, Peg wakes up. She looks around and says, where are my sisters to? And the mother said, now Peg, she said, the girls have gone off to seek the fortune, she said. But they don't want you coming with them. What's it, Peg? No way, she said. I'm going. She jumped up and she got dressed and she started running down the road. She could run pretty fast, right? She's, a, she's like a bear. You know how fast bears can run? Well, she was running almost as fast as a bear. After a while, the girls looked back and they, they seen a cloud of smoke coming up behind them. Oh, it's a big cloud of dust. They said, oh, it must be Peg. And they started running and running. They looked back and Peg was catching up with them. And they, they picked up rocks and they fired rocks at her. It was no good. Peg was coming. But sure enough, Peg joined them. They go and off together. They walked along for the whole of the first day. When it got to be uh, dark out, it was quite dark in the middle of the night, and of course there was no moon out that night. There was no street lights in them days. They were walking along all by themselves, cold and hungry in the woods. And they see a little hut of a house. And inside the house, there was a light. And she says, uh, let's go over there. She said, uh, I'll knock on the door. Maybe they'll let us stay for the night. and might give us something to eat. And she goes over and she, she knocks on the door. The old lady comes to the door. Yes, is it? Can I help you? I said, uh, me and my sister, she said, we're out in, the, out in the woods in the middle of the night. She said, we got nothing to eat. I wonder if we could stay here. I said, well, she said, uh, I got two daughters of my own, she said. I only got two beds. She said, uh, I think I can take two of you, but I can't take the three. I said, oh, that's all right. She said, my sister's going to sleep in the bed. She said, I'll sleep on the floor. I said, all right, all right. If you want, she said, come on in, come on in. And, it was a strange house, a, a 
all kinds of little corridors going off here and there. It was much bigger inside than it was outside. And we sat down and, and the old lady gave me some supper and, and a thin roll and two daughters and her two daughters looking at and Peg and her two sisters. They all felt kind of strange. And anyway, they all went to bed and uh, Peg's two sisters, they got in one bed and the old lady's two daughters, they got in another bed. And they were just lying down in Peg. She slept on the floor, of course. And after a while, an old lady come in and she said, Oh my, she said, uh, it's sharp and cold in here. She said, you'll find us some cold. She said, I got some nightcaps, she said, to keep you warm. She said, I got two white nightcaps for your sister's heads. She went over and took the, and put the two white nightcaps on Peg's two sister's heads. And then she left. And then Peg lay on the floor and the girls fell asleep. Peg couldn't sleep. There was something in her mind. There was something she didn't like about this house. She soon realized that the old woman was a witch. And she went downstairs. And when she went downstairs, she went into the dining room. She found a, a decanter, a, a jug that could never be emptied. You put a drop of water in it, turn it upside down, it flow water forever. Put a drop of milk, drop of rum, drop of wine, same thing. And then she went into the pantry, and in the pantry she found a, a magic lantern that could shine for half a mile of light. And you didn't have to fill it, you didn't have to light it, you just touch it. It shone for half a mile. So Peg went over and she touched it, and it shone out through the window of the pantry, out into the barn. And out in the barn there was this beautiful, beautiful white horse with a silver bell on the end of every hair in its mane. And if you could ring one of those bells, you could make one wish, and that one wish would come true, as long as you wish for it or something too big or too small. But you had to ride the horse first. So Peg said, oh boy, she said, this is the house of a witch. I gotta get my sisters out of here. She started to climb up the stairs. When she went up to the top of the stairs, she looked down and she seen the old witch coming down the corridor with a girt big knife in her hand for to kill Peg's two sisters. So Peg rushed into the room and she took the two white nightcaps off her, her sister's heads and she put them on the witch's daughter's heads. And the old witch came into the room. Oh, where are you Where are the two white nightcaps? She said, Jim Scott, there they are. There they are. And she killed them. Oh, she killed them. She killed them dead. And then she looked down and said, Oh my God, she said, It's my daughters. Oh no, she said, I'm going to kill my own daughters. And she said, No, she said, I'm going to kill the three of ye. And she started running after Peg and her two sisters. And they started running. That old lady couldn't run fast. But Peg ran for fast. And the girls started to fall behind. So Peg turned around. She picked up the two girls in her arms. And she started running. The old lady ran and ran and they ran and they ran and they ran. The whole night, just as dawn broke, the old lady got tired. She fell down asleep in a ditch by the side of the road. And that was it. Now they were safe. Now, uh, it turned out that Peg and her two sisters were just outside this kingdom nearby, and they went in, they, they decided to settle down there. And uh, I think Peg got a job somewhere anyway. She was taking care of her sisters. And, and uh, there was a king in that kingdom, and uh, he had three sons. So one day, Peg decided she was going to go visit the king. She goes up to the castle and she knocks on the door. And the, uh, the guard comes out and says, Yes, he said, can I help you? She said, My name is Peg Bearskin. She said, I want to see the king. And uh, the guard says, she said, Well, you just can't just go see the king like that. He says, You got to have an appointment. She said, You tell him Peg Bearskin is here and, he, and she wants to see him. And the king said, uh, uh, the, the guard said, all right, he says, well, no, he says, your majesty says, a woman outside, her name is Peg Bearskin, says she wants to see it. The king says, oh, yeah, well, that's an interesting name, he said, I haven't got much to do. He said, uh, he said uh, send her in. So he sends Peg in, and Peg says, uh, Peg says, my highness, she said, I was wondering, would you be interested in having your oldest son uh, marry my oldest sister? He said, well, he said, maybe I would. He said, uh, what would you give me for that, Peg? And Peg says, uh, I'll give you, she said. Uh, a magic decanter, uh, a jug, she said, that uh, can never be empty. You know, put a drop of water in it, turn it upside down, it flows and flows and flows, water forever, drop of rum, drop of wine, drop of milk, same thing. He said, oh my, he said. She said, that would be a handy thing for a king. He, and he was thinking about it, and he was just about to give his permission. And he said, oh, 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 oh. hang on, Peg, he said. What would you want for to get that? Peg says, all I want, she says. A handful of pepper. A handful of pepper, says the king. Oh, that's a very good deal. He calls to the kitchen. Handful of pepper for, for Peg Bearskin. 
And now, now I remember Peg's hands were, were like baseball gloves, right? So she could hold a lot of pepper. So Peg took the handful of pepper, and she went back to the witch's house. She went into the witch's dining room, and she hid down behind the sideboard. And the witch's husband was there, he was eating his supper. He had a great big leg of meat. Chewing away at it. When he finished, he ate the bone. And he called out his wife and said, Woman! He said, bring me some drink. All right, all right, I'll bring you some drink. Hold your horses. She goes over. She gets the magic decanter. She puts a little drop of wine in it. The skipper, he takes the jug. He puts it on his head. He drinks, he drinks, he drinks, he drinks, he drinks, he drinks, he drinks. He said, more. All right, all right, I'll have some manners. She said, she went over. She got a little drop of rum. She put the drop of rum in the decanter. And he takes the... The decanter puts it on his head and he starts drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking. And while he's drinking, Peg comes out from behind the sideboard with a handful of pepper. She throws half at the old skipper's face and half at the witch's face. And they start sneezing and coughing and coughing and sneezing, sneezing and coughing. And while they're sneezing and coughing, Peg goes over and she grabs hold to, to the magic decanter. She brings it home. She gives it to the king. And, and her oldest sister is married to the king's oldest son. Anyway, that's all well and good. A month later, Peg goes back to the castle again. Knocks on the door. First, now everyone knows who she is now, so they're more friendly. Oh, Peg Bearskin, says the guard. She says, what can I do for you? She says, I want to see the king again. And uh, she says, oh, I'm sure the king will be happy to see you. And so he calls out to the king. The king says, yes, send her in. He says, what can I do for you today, Peg? Peg says, I was wondering, me, honey. She said, would you be interested in having your second oldest son marry my second oldest sister? And the king said, well, he said, maybe I would. He said, uh, worked out pretty good the first time. He said, uh, uh, tell me, Peg, uh, tell me, Peg, uh, I might uh, give him my permission. He said, well, what would you, uh, what would you do for that? Peg says, uh, well, she says, if you let your second oldest son marry my second oldest sister, she said, I'll give you a magic lantern, she said, that can shine for half a mile of light. You don't have to fill it, you don't have to let it, just touch it. And it shines for half a mile. He said, oh, my, he said, that would be a handy thing for a king. He was just about to give his permission when he said, oh, 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 hang on, Peg, he said. What would you want for to get that? Peg says, all I want, she says, is a handful of salt. A handful of salt, says the king. That's a pretty good deal. He calls out to the kitchen and says, handful of salt for Peg Bearskin. Now remember, Peg's hands for the whole, the whole hog's head of salt. So Peg goes back to the witch's house and she sneaks in again. She goes into the pantry. The old witch is there, and she's got a big pot of soup, and she's stirring the soup, and she's singing a song. I make the soup, I make the soup, I make the soup today. I make the soup, I make the soup. She was making the soup, and then after a while, she went over to taste the soup, and she took a little sip and said, Oh, oh that's too fresh. I need some salt. And when the old witch turned around to get the salt shaker, Peg came out from behind the sideboard with a hogshead of salt, poured it all down into the soup, stirred the soup up, and went back and hit again. And the old lady came back to the salt shaker, and she put a bit of salt and tasted it again and said, Oh my! So now it's too salty! So she called out to uh, the servant girl, Darlene, the foolish servant girl, and said, Darlene, she said, go down to the well. She said, get me two buckets of cold water. I gotta put them into the soup. It's too salty. Uh, and then you can take the magic lantern. This was the middle of the night. And so uh, the, the foolish servant girl, she took the magic lantern and she touched it. And of course, it shone for half a mile of light. But what did she do? She hung it on a nail and she went out into the dark. And it was a mile to the well. And as soon as she got into the dark, she got lost. And Peg went over, grabbed hold of the lantern, brought it back and gave it to the king. And so Peg's second oldest sister was married to the king's second oldest son. Now, I know you know what's going to happen next, don't you? Yeah, sure enough. Everyone did. Everyone was afraid of what was going to happen next. So the king, he's uh, waiting for this to happen. One day, a month later, Peg comes to the door. And uh, the, the guard pretends he's not home. And Peg says, oh, no, you're in there, she said. Open up, she said. It's Peg Bearskin, she said, or I'll break the door down. And uh, the guard goes over up to her and says, what do you want? Peg says, I want to see the king. He says, well, uh, the king isn't here today. He's gone out of town. That's not true, she said. I've seen his horse parked in the parking lot. All right, all right, Sister Guard. She goes into the king. She says, Me, honey, she said, I was wondering if you'd be interested in having your youngest son marry me. 
Well, the king didn't like that idea one bit. The young prince, you can see, he didn't like the idea very much either. And the king said, uh, boy, Peggy said, uh, I don't know. He said, uh, I don't think so. He said, uh, it worked out twice. And I'd be pushing me up to try a third time. I think, I think I'll say no this time. All right, all right, says Peggy. She turns to leave. And she's just going out the door. And she just gets to the door and she stops and turns back and says, behind us, she says, could I whisper something in your ear? She says, yes, I suppose. So she goes over to him. She says, behind us, she says, if you let me marry your youngest son, she said, I'll get you a magic horse, a beautiful white horse with a silver bell on the end of every hair in its mane. And if you ring one of those bells, you can make one wish, and that one wish will come true as long as you wish for yourself too big or too small. But you got to ride the horse first. She says, oh, my. Would be a handy thing for a king. And he, he thought about it uh, for a long time, and he he said, uh, he said, uh, and maybe I'll give my permission. He said, but, but Peggy said, but tell me, what would you want when I get that? But that says Peggy. She says, all I want, she says, is a saw and a knife. A saw and a knife, Sister King. That's a pretty good thing. He calls off to the carpenter shop and says, saw and a knife for Peg Bearskin. So Peg takes the saw and the knife, and she goes back right up to the front door of the witch's house, bold as brass, and she knocks at the door. And the old witch comes to the door and says, Yes, I have. Ah! Peg Bearskin, she said. Oh, Peg Bearskin, you were the one that made me kill me two daughters. The trolls told me magic to carry them and never be empty. And the magic lantern that could spar for half a mile of life. She said, Peg, if I did that to you, what would you do to me? Peg said, Boy, she said, what I done was pretty bad. She said, uh, if you done that to me, she said, I I'll take you. She said, I stuff you down in a canvas bag. And then I tie the bag up, she said, and I go out in the woods, she said, and I'd get some hazel rods. And I'd come back and I'd beat you till you barked like a dog, till you meowed like a cat, and until your bones rattled like crockery ware. And the witch said, ah, thing, that's what I'll do to you. Ah, she grabbed all the thing and shoved her down in the canvas bag and tied up the bag and went off into the woods when he get to hazel rods. When Peg was down in the bag, she took the knife that the king had given her and she cut her way out of the bag. And she went back to the witch's house and she took the witch's dog and she put the witch's dog down in the bag. And then she took the witch's cat and she put the witch's cat down in the bag. And then she went into the pantry and she took the, the witch's crockery to wear all her, her, her plates and, and cups and saucers she put them down in the bag, she tied up the bag, and she went into the barn, and she stole the magic horse. She jumped on his back, and she ran, hell bent for leather, as fast as she could, back to the castle once again. In the meantime, the witch comes out of the woods with the hazel rod. She says, oh, hey, Jesus, you're gonna get it now. Oh, yes, you're gonna get it now. And she beats the bag, and the dog barks, burr, burr, burr. And she beats the bag again, and the cat, meow, and she beats the bag again, and all the Crockery rare rattles like human bones. Oh, Peg, she said, your words come true, your words come true. <laughs> and she went back to the house, and as soon as the witch got back to the house, she looked around and said, oh, it's with me dog. Oh, no! She said, my dog is gone! And then she went upstairs and my cat, my cat is gone! And then she went into the, into the pantry and said, oh, no, my crockery ware. And then she looked out in the barn and she realized that someone had taken her magic horse. She said, oh, no! My horse is gone! She ran out in the barn. She had another horse. It was almost as fast as the white horse. And she jumped on his back, and she rode hell-bent for leather. But she was a much better rider than Peg was. And after a while, Peg looked up, and she could see the horse getting closer and closer and closer. And Peg was going as fast as she could. Now, there was a little wooden bridge over to the castle. So Peg went over the bridge, and she took out the saw that the king had given her. And she sawed the bridge almost all the way. There was just a little tiny bit of wood left. And what do you know? When the old lady went over the bridge, the bridge gave way, and she went down into the water. And as soon as ever she was covered in water, she melted. But that's generally what happens to witches. Her last words were, Disintegrating! And then Peg went back to the castle, and she gave the horse to the king, and uh, I guess he must have been able to ride it, because yeah, he must have made his wish, I guess, because sure enough, Peg was allowed to marry his youngest son. Uh, let me tell you the truth, though. The young prince was never very happy. He was depressed all the time. Peg was very sad. And one day, Peg was in the kitchen. She was just 
washed the dishes, and she looked out the window, and she seen the prince, and he was sitting on the stump of a tree. And he was just crying his eyes out. And Hank called out the window. She said, uh, you don't want me, boy, do you? And he said, no, mom, I don't. And Hank said, well, I'll tell you a little secret. She said, you know that horse you said I give to your father? Yes, to the prince. She said, that's a magic horse. We got a silver bell on the end of every hair in its mane. And if you ring one of those bells, you can make one wish, and that one wish will come true, as long as you wish for either something too big or too small, but you got to ride the horse first. And the prince said, could I wish for you to be beautiful? And the prince said, I suppose you could. And so the prince, he, he was a dandy rider. He rode the horse, and he rang one of the bells, and he wished for Peg to be beautiful. And then he went back to the castle and opened up the front door of the castle. Now, Peg's bed was at the top of the stairs, and he called out to her and said, Peg, Peg, come out. I want to look at you. And the door opened, and Peg came out. She stood at the top of the stairs. And the prince said, oh, Peg, he said, you are the most beautiful woman that water ever wet or the sun ever shined on. And Peg stood there, and she had a beautiful, beautiful silver dress. She had a crown on her head. She was, oh, she was, she was as big, ugly, and hairy as ever. And then she said, and you, my darling prince, she said, you are more handsome than ever. And what do you know? But the prince was as big, ugly, and hairy as Peg. And they fell in love at that very moment. And they're still in love to this very day. And I'm glad to say that their happy days were as happy as the happiest days that any of us have. And I'm also glad to say that their sad days were never as sad as the saddest days that some of us have. And that's the end of my story. Peg Bearskin. And it's all in this book. Buy the book. Thank you.